Uh, next, uh, productive and non-productivity arrangement. So imprecise uh, joining of rearranged segments, so DNA segments, may result in out-of-phase joining, out-of-phase joining. And the triplet reading frame for translation is not preserved. So here what happens, the joining of the um, segments. So imprecise joining of the segments, which results in out-of-phase joining, and the triplet reading frame for translation is not preserved. In such cases, the rearrangement results in non-productive, non-productive uh, products. It is known as non-productive rearrangement. So the resulting VJ or VDJ unit will contain numerous stop codons which interrupt the translation. If it is a non-productive rearrangement, that leads to that leads to in the mRNA transcript the uh, what is known as uh, stop codons okay so uh, if uh, stop codons are more stop codons are present that leads to the immature termination of the uh, translation process okay so when gene segments are joined in phase out of phase and in phase so the reading frame is maintained okay if it is out of phase it leads to non productive rearrangement if it is in phase that reading frame is maintained that leads to productive rearrangement that results in a proper uh, product in translational product proper antibody okay this uh, in phase and out phase you can see so it is also known as joining flexibility so junctional flexibility in the joining of immunoglobulin gene segments so b and j this is uh, B, and these are the codon regions, and J, B and J, okay? So here, arrows 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3. So this leads to generates a productive rearrangement. Productive rearrangement, which can be translated into protein. So this complete proteins you will get 1, 2, and 3, okay? Blue colored one. And next, if it is uh, out of phase, if it is out of phase, that 5 and 4, 4 and 5, that leads to non-productive rearrangement that contains stop codons. This one, this contains stop codons and is not translated into protein. Okay, this is known as the productive and non-productive rearrangements of the immunoglobulin genes. So next, uh, allelic exclusion. Here, a B cell, a B cell is uh, deployed like any other uh, somatic cell. It expresses the rearranged heavy chain genes from only one chromosome. It expresses the rearranged heavy chain genes from only one chromosome. The process by which this is accomplished is called as allelic exclusion. So it ensures the functional bases never contain more than one V, D, J, and BL and GL, that means heavy chains and the light chain. So only one heavy chain should be present, only one light chain should be present. This is essential for the antigenic specificity of the B cell. So in this case, which consists of allelic exclusion means the parental cell, the B cell, which consists of both the, uh, the chromosomes from the maternal as well as from the paternal also. So only one will be expressed. Only one will be expressed either maternal or paternal okay so means one of heavy chain or one of light chain will be expressed um, not both so that is uh, known as allelic exclusion next generation of antibody diversity there are seven means of uh, antibody diversification have been identified in mice and humans generation of antibody diversity there are the thousands of uh, antigens so you have to generate the diversify means diverse antibodies in that diverse variable regions okay so how it is produced there are seven uh, um, cases in that seven means by which the antibody diversity can be maintained uh, one is uh, seven means of antibody diversification have been identified in mice and humans. So one is multiple, multiple germline gene segments. That is one method. And second one is combinatorial V, D, J joining, combinational. So either v, combinational V, D, J joining, junctional flexibility, and P-region nucleotide addition, and the N-region nucleotide addition, and somatic hypermutation 
combinatorial association of the light and the heavy chains. So by this means, different uh, antibodies, variable antibodies can be uh, generated. So we'll study one by one. So multiple germline uh, gene segments and the combinatorial. So both are combined together. So here in human germline DNA, the first one, in human germline DNA, 51 VH, variable heavy chain, 27 D, 6 JH, 40 VK, kappa, 5 JK, and 31 uh, V lambda and 4 J lambda segments are present. In mouse, about 85 VK, 134 VH, and 4 functional JH, 4 functional JK, 3 functional J lambda, and an estimated 13 DH, but only 3 V lambda gene segments are present. So different. So variation in the V uh, function J and also the D, the segments present. So they contribute to the antigen binding sites in the antibodies. So multiple germline gene segments. So many number of V, many number of D, many number of J of light chain and the heavy chain are present. So that is known as multiple germline gene segments. Next coming to the combinatorial uh, VDJ joining. In that case, so um, in humans, the ability of any of the 51 VH gene segments to combine with any of the 27 DH segments, whatever the number may be, and any of the six J segments allows a considerable amount of AB chain gene diversity to be generated. Suppose we have a 51 VH, 57 VHU, 27 uh, 27 DHU, 27 DHU, and uh, 6, um, 6 JHU, uh, DHU, JHU. So 51 into 27 into 6, possibility is 8,000. 262 possible combinations are obtained. So that many number of the antibodies can be, variable regions can be generated, okay? Similarly, the 40 VK, um, VK, 5 JK, is, that give rise to 200 and 30 and into 4, that give rise to 120 possible combinations. So total antibody combining diversity in humans to well over 10 to the power of 10, okay? So many number of genes, multiple gene segments will be present. So different combinations, you will end up with different diversity of the antibody that is known as combinatorial. Next one, junctional flexibility. So you have studied uh, out of phase and uh, in phase and out phase. So in, that increases the enormous diversity generated by means of V, D and J combinations. That can lead to many non-productive rearrangements but it also generates several productive recombinations. I had explained in the first slide only non-productive and productive combinations. So that encode the alternative amino acids at each coding joint, thereby increasing the antibody diversity. So junctional flexibility also leads to the antibody diversity. Um, so next one, uh, fourth one is uh, P, ad P nucleotide addition and N nucleotide addition. P nucleotide addition and the N nucleotide addition. So in this case, when the cleavage occurs, when the cleavage occurs here, so when the cleavage occurs, that generates a single standard, single standard nucleotides. So for this, the repair enzymes add the complementary nucleotides. Repair enzymes are the complementary nucleotides, that's a blue colored one, okay? So this generates this generates what is known as palindromic sequences. So it is known as P nucleotide addition. So whatever the sequences are present, for that complementary sequences are added, that is known as P nucleotide addition. In case of N nucleotide addition, so apart from adding the P nucleotide, means uh, the combinations of this blue colored one, okay, so the TDT, TDT is uh, terminal, dinucleotidyl transferase. So that adds n number of nucleotides. Uh, repair enzymes add complementary nucleotides. Some nucleotides are added here. That gives different amino acids. Different amino acids. So that is not present in the germinal, the uh, actual gene. So these uh, nucleotides are not present in the uh, coding sequences of the gene. So these are, these are additional. So P nucleotide addition and also N nucleotide addition also leads to the, also leads to the formation of the, means diversifying antibodies. 
next one somatic hypermutation somatic hypermutation mutation you know what is so in the somatic region hypermutation takes this it is known as somatic hypermutation we'll see what it is so this results in the additional antibody diversity that is generated in the rearranged variable region gene units so this causes the individual nucleotides individual nucleotides in the v j or v d j units to be replaced with the alternatives in the hyper it is a mutation hypermutation so here the individual nucleotides in the v j or v d j units to be replaced with the alternative nucleotides so thus possibly altering the specificity of the encoded immunoglobulins okay so this is how the somatic hypermutation alters the they means uh, leads to the diversity diversity of the antibodies variable regions so this usually occurs at the germinal centers you have already studied the uh, maturation of the b lymphocytes t lymphocytes in the germinal centers there it takes place so targeted to rearranged v regions located within a dna sequence containing about 1500 nucleotides which includes the whole of the vj or vdj segment so it is largely random next affinity maturation this also you have studied in the b cell maturation affinity maturation means the following exposure to antigen so uh, b cell is exposed to antigen those b cells with a higher affinity receptors will be selected for survival because of their greater ability to bind to the antigen so this takes place in the germinal center so affinity maturation also you have studied in the b cell maturation somatic hypermutation and um, affinity maturation both you have studied over there next the last one association of the ab and the light chains so combinational association of h and l chain so you know you have seen how many number of uh, h and l chains are present so different combinations gives uh, different uh, means antibody diversity combinator combinational association of the h and l chain also can generate the antibody diversity in humans the potential number of ab and light chain combinations is approximately uh, how much it is so this much uh, 2 lakhs um there are 8262 heavy chains and uh, 320 light chains are present so this multiply of this combinations one light chain with one uh, heavy chain so different combinations gives different uh, so asso association of the heavy and, and the heavy and the light chains so that gives the variation in the antibody antibody variable region so this is higher than the actually generated amount because not all vh d or vl gene segments are used in the same frequency different frequencies are used so that gives different diversity diversity in the immunoglobulin variable region so this is about the uh, antibody generation how the generate antibody diversity is generated generation of antibody diversity thank you